Recently, I had a short window of time to ride the latest Fazari Abajo Peak. I decided it would be a good idea to put together a bite-sized review to tell you what I thought. So here it goes. The bike I rode was a really nice metallic green color and was specced with a few upgrades available through Fazari. These options include a DVO Diamond D3 fork, an X-Fusion Manic dropper post, and tires that had been set up tubeless. As specced, you're looking at $23.99 US. The Abajo Peak provides a 140-130 travel full suspension platform that puts it against a few other bikes in the direct-to-consumer category like the Polygon Siskiyou T or the Vitas Mythique. Having ridden the former bikes, I was interested to see how this one stacks up. Right off the rip, it was clear that the bike is pretty light. I don't have an exact figure, but when you pair its weight with its intelligent tire choice, the bike really rolls. This came into play with climbing sections as well. I noticed when I got home that on two climbs that I frequent, I had set PRs with the Abajo. As for descending, I was able to ride every trail that I normally do. I must admit that the geometry of the bike felt very foreign to me, so most of my descents were ridden at significantly lesser speeds than normal. I set no downhill PRs while riding on the Abajo Peak. I account a lot of this unfamiliarity to its geometry. The stem was a bit long for my taste, and the bottom bracket felt higher than what I'm used to. Neither of these attributes are bad, I just would have needed more time to acclimate to it. The suspension on the Abajo Peak was solid. The optional Diamond D3 had noticeable small bump compliance as well as a supportive mid-stroke. Both of these attributes are important to me with force, and this one did a great job. The X-Fusion rear shock was also satisfactory in my opinion. My only critique here was that it could be a bit wallowy in the climbs, but nothing too crazy. The SRAM Level T brakes for me were probably the most challenging component to get along with. I'm a heavier rider at about 210 pounds, and the bike at times felt like it was running away from me. It's very possible that with some larger rotors and a more aggressive pad compound, this problem could have been squashed, considering it's spec with a modest 180-160 rotor setup and organic pads. As for the SRAM NX Group, it's a solid drivetrain. I have zero complaints as it did its job throughout the course of my riding day with no hiccups to report. The fact I have so little to say about it is definitely a good thing. Same goes for the X-Fusion Manic Dropper. It did its job well, over and over again. Having come from a bike that I believe was more descent optimized, I feel that the Fazari Abajo Peak moves a step back in descent ability in exchange for climbing ability. If you're looking for a solid, no compromise trail bike that's focus is 50-50 between climbing and descending, I think that the Abajo Peak could be your solution. With its lifetime frame warranty and a $2,400 price tag, you'll be hard pressed to find a better bike. I hope you enjoyed this video and please comment if you have any questions. Remember the ride is secure and I'll see you next time.